Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin, and this is the video tutorial for my Photoshop watercolor effect. It's pretty easy to use. This should only take a couple of minutes. And uh, the first thing we'll make is one of these more isolated sort of designs. And then uh, after that, we're going to make one of these round paintings. So the first thing you'll do is download that folder and go ahead and unzip it. There's a few different files inside. Uh, there's a README and then two Photoshop documents. And this is where you can choose whether you want a horizontal effect or a vertical effect. Uh, for this tutorial, I'll use the horizontal one. I'm using Creative Cloud right now, so this add-on works fine in CS5. It's just that my screen recording software doesn't work with CS5 for some reason. So when you open it up, you'll see the default image. Uh, and to change it, we need the Layers panel. So we'll go up to Window. And then, where is it? There we go, layers. And uh, this is the smart object. So you'll place your image in there, and then the effect will automatically be applied when you save the smart object. So to open it up, we'll double click this little page icon here. And uh, we're inside the smart object. And it's opened it up as a separate document tab. So we'll save this smart object by Xing out when we're done and then saving it. So I'll turn off, uh, actually, I'll show you the masks here because. That's what all these folders are. These are all different masks you can choose from. And just make sure that your picture is underneath the masks, if you decide you need the masks. And uh, make sure only one is on at a time. So you could do the rough mask, uh, the circle mask, grunge, or whatever. Just make sure it's only one at a time. Otherwise, they'll start masking each other. For this first, uh, first tutorial, we won't use the masks. And I'll hide this default image and then drag in this low resolution uh, cactus image I've got here. Mm, there it is. So we'll drop it in and scale it up. Uh, this effect works fine even if the, pi the picture is like 200 pixels square. It does a lot of blurring and a lot of uh, uh, filters and stuff so you won't notice the pixels at all. So that's a pretty good size. I'll do enter. And uh, it's placed it, uh, well, let's move it down here first. There, it's placed it as a smart object, uh, so I want to rasterize that. So I'll right click and rasterize, and uh, then I'll I'll brighten it up a little bit. I think it's a little bit dull, so I'll go to image adjustments, saturation, and uh, this is pretty much optional. So I'll just brighten up the colors a little bit. Mm, okay, that's pretty good. So the background of this picture is totally pure white. Uh, but even if it was gray or beige or something, the effect will push it all the way to white. Uh, even to the point where most of these shadows will, will go away. They'll just be a little shadow in the end result. So once we're happy with our arrangement here, we can go up and uh, X out of this document tab. And we'll do yes. And uh, it usually takes one or two minutes for the effect to load, but I'll speed it up. So here it is, uh, the effect applied, and uh, we have a couple of options. All these folders that are green are things that you can switch on and off. Uh, it's totally up to you. Uh, I'll zoom in here and show you this bottom one. This is the paper texture. So it just removes the paper texture from the white background here. Uh, so we'll actually, I think I'll leave that on. And then above that, this is going to be on by default, and it just darkens the colors a little bit. Uh, this is saturating the colors just a little bit more. That's optional. And uh, this is lighter colors. Uh, and then this is antique tone. This will give everything a kind of like a sepia tone. And then uh, also darker outlines. That's optional. It just darkens these little black uh, sort of edge marks here. So I'll leave on the saturation and the darker color. And then I'm going to turn this into a uh, greeting card, like a 4x6 postcard size, actually. So I'll export this. I'll go to File, Export, Save for Web, and I'll save it as a JPEG. And now to actually lay out my postcard, I'll make a new Photoshop document. File, New. And uh, it's in inches right now. So I'm going to make it uh, 4 by, or actually 6 by 4, 300 DPI. And then I want the color mode to be actually CMYK, but I'll change that in the document itself. So I'll leave this RGB. And then OK. I'll drag my image in. This one right here. And then at this point, I can scale it and uh, position it however I want. So right now, this document's in RGB. 
and before we print it, we should convert it to CMYK. So my, I think the best way to do that is to go up to Edit, and then down here, Convert to Profile, and then select uh, Working CMYK, and then OK. And there we go. It's changed the colors a little bit. A little bit of loss of saturation. So if you wanted to brighten it back up again, you could go to Hue Saturation and just make it just a tiny bit more saturated. And then we can save this uh, as a JPEG and print it like that. So 1800 by 1200, that's uh, 6 by 4. And we'll save it to the desktop here. So next, I'm going to show you how I made that little circle painting. And uh, so I've opened up a new document here, new watercolor effect horizontal document. And uh, I'll go into the smart object here. And uh, I'll hide this image and hide the mask as well. And then I'll go ahead and grab my uh, night sky image. So this one's pretty low resolution as well. Uh, I'll just drag it in, scale it up, and then I'll use the rough circle mask. So this one here, I'll turn that on. And now my image is above the mask, so the mask won't affect it until I put it down here. There we go. And then also, my mask is too big for this image, so I can scale the mask down by opening up that group and uh, making sure that's not checked, making sure that's un unlinked. And then I'll select the mask, and then I can transform it like any other object by going to Transform Scale. And uh, I can constrain it and uh, shrink it down, maybe like that. And then I'll press Enter, and then scale my image up just a little bit more. And I'll also warp my image to give it a more of a kind of a more handmade look. So then I'll go to Edit, Transform, and then Warp. And then this lets you kind of bend your image. And I want it to kind of wrap around the edges. Uh, so it looks like it's kind of these trees are kind of working their way up the edge of the mask. Okay. That's pretty good. So I'll do Enter. And then I want to darken it. I want to add like a little vignette around the inside of this mask. So I'll, I'll make sure my image is selected. And uh, again, it's a smart object because I've dragged it in from the desktop. I'll uh, rasterize that. And then I can use the Burn tool to darken it a bit. So I'll go here, and uh, the Burn tool is the middle one. If, it, if it's just default, it'll look like that. But if you just hold it down, and then you can select the Burn tool. And it's a good idea to leave it a pretty large diameter, uh, making sure that your hardness is pretty low. And then I can just, just tap it around the edge here, just darken it a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. So uh, I'm happy with this. I'll X out of the Smart Object and save it. Okay, so here's the result. That looks pretty good. I think I'll turn off the Saturate Colors option here. And uh, I want to add some stars. So I'll do that with the Brush Tool. So I'll make a new layer above our Smart Object. And then I'll select the Brush Tool. And then make sure I've got white here. And uh, I'll make it, yeah, 100% hardness, 50 pixel size, and uh, I'll scale it down just a little bit. Okay, just add some different size stars. And in one of my preview images, I had a little constellation in one, and I just drew that. Um, it's pretty easy. You could just paste in an image from the internet of some constellation and uh, just go over it with this tool and then hide that original image. Okay, so I'm happy with the stars. I'll add some text, and I'll go back in the Smart Object to do that. And uh, I'll just place the text down here. So I'll get the uh, Text tool. And uh, once I click, it'll make a, a whole new layer. It's underneath the circle mask, so right, the mask's going to block it. So I want to just drag it above the circle mask. Uh, so then uh, anything I type uh, will be visible no matter what. So I'll say... Camp Life. That sounds cool. And uh, pretty tiny. I'll scale that up. Transform Scale. Okay. And this typeface I've got, uh, this is called Rivina. And uh, I'll put a link to that in the description. Okay. I'll distort it just a little bit. So I'll uh, select, right click this uh, layer here. 
and uh, I'll click rasterize type and now it's an image and then I can use the selection tool select this and then edit transform warp and just give it a little bit of a handmade look um, you can also use the warping on images before you apply the effect if you wanted to make it look like it was more kind of uh, quirky or something Okay, and then when I'm happy I'll press enter and uh, control D to deselect that and I want to add some variation in the color like it's black right now so when I apply the effect it'll be like totally black as well so while this is selected I'll go to image adjustments hue saturation and then make it a little bit lighter using this lightness just like that and then I'll go over to the burn tool again and then I can sort of selectively darken the edges just like that And uh, this will add some nice variation uh, when the watercolor effect gets applied. Okay, so when I'm happy with this, I'll close out of the smart object. And there we go. That's what the text looks like. So I'm happy with this. I'll turn this into a greeting card, uh, but I'll do it without this paper texture background. So I'll close that. And then File, Export, Save for Web and uh, JPEG is fine. I'll do save. I'll save it to my desktop. And then I'll make a new document. And we'll do a 4 by 6 size. And uh, I'll drag that image in. So here it is. And scale it up. And enter. And then I'll turn this into a uh, CMYK image because this is for printing. And I'll do it the same way. I'll go to Edit, Convert to Profile, and then make sure Working CMYK is selected. And then OK. And uh, there we go. This, this would be a file suitable for printing and uh, just like that. So there's one more thing I want to show you. I'll go back to this document. And I want to show you how to turn off this paper texture if that's what you want to do. So in this little red layer here, Advanced Options, I'll open that up. And this will have some uh, different parts of the effect that you can change and customize. Um, but the results might be a little unpredictable, so this is totally optional. And to turn off the paper texture, I'll open the paper texture group. And then you have these two uh, layers here. So right now, Canson 80 pound is turned on. So if I turn that off, the effect goes away but it's also too dark so I made a paper alt alternate layer here so I'll turn that one on and uh, our colors are fixed um, but we don't have the paper texture so if you want to turn it off just make sure that you have this one on instead okay. and uh, there we go hopefully this is a pretty good overview about how you can use this little add-on here to make some cool watercolor artwork if you have any questions you can send me an email or leave a comment but uh, other than that, guys, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.